the restaurant glowed with opulence that evening. Every detail meticulously arranged by its owner. Albert Marshall. Le Maison Royale was the pride of Albert's life. A French restaurant known for its exquisite cuisine. Breathtaking ambience. An exclusive clientele. Nestled in the city's most affluent neighborhood. Le Maison Royale attracted only the elite, politicians, business magnates, and celebrities who appreciated Albert's unyielding standards of sophistication and privacy. Albert Marshall, now in his late sixties, carried himself with a sense of authority that bordered on arrogance. His silver hair was perfectly combed, his suit immaculately tailored, and his gaze sharp and discerning. He had built the restaurant from the ground up, establishing a reputation that was unshakable, or so he thought, beneath his polished exterior. However, Albert harbored certain biases that he'd carefully kept concealed over the years. Those biases would be challenged in ways he couldn't imagine on this particular evening. As Albert surveyed the dining room, he noticed a couple approaching the restaurant entrance. They were impeccably dressed, the man wore a tailored black suit, and the woman a flowing crimson dress that radiated elegance. But Albert's smile faded when he noticed their skin color, they were black. The couple, James and Rachel Bennett, approached the hostess stand with smiles and poise. They were there to celebrate their fifth wedding anniversary. Having chosen Le Maison Royale because they wanted a memorable evening in one of the city's most highly acclaimed restaurants. James, a successful tech entrepreneur, and Rachel, a respected lawyer, had both worked tirelessly to reach their level of success and believed they had earned the right to enjoy an evening in a setting as refined as Le Maison Royale. Albert, however, saw things differently. To him, the Bennett's presence was an anomaly, a disruption to the carefully curated image he had of his establishment. Though he kept his outward expression calm and courteous, he felt an inner annoyance rise within him. Good evening. Albert greeted them. His voice smooth but laced with subtle disdain. Do you have a reservation? Yes. Under the name Bennett. James replied. Maintaining his polite smile. Albert's expression tightened. He scanned his reservation list. Almost as though expecting an error. But there it was, Bennett. 7.30 p.m. A legitimate reservation. Reluctantly. Albert nodded. Follow me, he said. Leading them toward a table near the back of the dining room. Away from the central area where the more regular clientele dined. The table was by the kitchen doors an area Albert usually reserved for guests he deemed less desirable. James and Rachel exchanged a quick look but chose to let it go. They sat down, determined to enjoy their evening, regardless of the subtle slight. As the night went on, they could sense Albert's disapproval. The service was inexplicably slow, and their waiter seemed unusually nervous, fumbling with the menus and avoiding eye contact. The Bennets were well-versed in handling microaggressions, they were used to overcoming others' assumptions and biases. But as the evening wore on, it became increasingly clear that Albert's disdain was more than a silent judgment, it was active discrimination. After waiting an hour for their main course, James finally asked the waiter about the delay. The young man stammered an apology and hurried back to the kitchen. Albert watched the interaction with a disapproving eye. To him, the Bennett's very presence challenged the sanctity of his establishment. Finally, as they waited for dessert, Albert decided he'd had enough. He approached their table with a forced smile. I hope the service has been satisfactory this evening, he said. Though his tone betrayed a hint of sarcasm. James looked him in the eye. We've noticed a few delays. But we're here to celebrate a special evening so we're willing to overlook it. Albert raised an eyebrow. Special evening? May I ask what brings you to Le Maison Royale? It's our anniversary. Rachel replied. 
her tone polite but firm. Albert's smile tightened. Ah. I see. Well. I hope you find the atmosphere here suitable, he said. His words carrying a weight they both understood. Our regular clientele appreciates the privacy and exclusivity we offer. Rachel felt a surge of anger but remained composed. Thank you. Mr. Marshall, she replied calmly. We understand what Le Maison Royale represents. That's why we chose to celebrate here. Albert nodded curtly, missing the subtle rebuke in her tone. Without another word, he turned and walked away, feeling triumphant, as though he had somehow maintained the integrity of his restaurant. After they left, James and Rachel knew they could have made a scene or demanded to speak with someone higher up. But they chose a different approach. They walked away with a plan that would bring Albert Marshall's biases to light in a way he would never forget. Two weeks later, Albert received an invitation to a private meeting with an investment firm that had expressed interest in acquiring Le Maison Royale. The offer was too good to pass up, a significant sum that would allow Albert to retire comfortably and leave behind a lasting legacy. Though he hadn't initially considered selling, the lucrative offer made him reconsider. When the day of the meeting arrived, Albert dressed in his finest suit and made his way to the firm's sleek downtown office. He was shown into a high-rise conference room with panoramic views of the city, a setting that reflected the wealth and influence he was accustomed to. He waited, rehearsing his talking points and feeling confident that he was about to make the deal of a lifetime. To his astonishment, when the door opened, in walked James and Rachel Bennett. They were dressed in professional attire, radiating the same poise and confidence they had displayed at his restaurant. Albert's face went pale as he realized who they were. Mr. Marshall. James greeted him extending a hand. Thank you for meeting with us today. We represent the firm interested in acquiring Le Maison Royale. Albert hesitated. A wave of disbelief washing over him. But he forced himself to shake James's hand. His mind racing as he processed the situation. Rachel took a seat across from him and gave him a polite, yet pointed smile. We've been interested in Le Maison Royale for some time. We believe there's immense potential for growth and an opportunity to modernize the image of the restaurant. Albert's composure cracked. Modernize the image, he repeated, barely concealing his disdain. Le Maison Royale has always catered to a particular type of clientele. It's what gives the restaurant its charm. James's smile didn't waver. We agree that Le Maison Royale has a unique atmosphere. However, we believe that true exclusivity comes from inclusivity, that every patron should feel welcomed and valued. Albert forced a tight smile. Unwilling to reveal his discomfort. I built Le Maison Royale with a specific vision in mind. Rachel leaned forward. Her gaze unflinching. And we respect that. But sometimes. Visions need to adapt to the times. Our offer is generous. Mr. Marshall, it would ensure a comfortable retirement for you while allowing Le Maison Royale to evolve. Albert felt cornered. He knew that refusing the offer might lead to a public backlash. Especially if the story of his treatment of the Bennets went public. After a moment of tense silence, he reluctantly nodded. Fine, he said. His voice strained. I'll accept your terms. The contract was signed. And within weeks, Le Maison Royale underwent a transformation. James and Rachel invested in refreshing the decor, introducing a more diverse menu, and creating an atmosphere that celebrated inclusivity while maintaining the elegance that had made the restaurant famous. Under their leadership, Le Maison Royale flourished. The restaurant attracted a new, broader clientele and reservations surged as word spread about its welcoming environment. The community embraced the new Le Maison Royale, appreciating its blend of tradition and progressiveness. Meanwhile, Albert Marshall watched from afar, his once-proud legacy now thriving without him. 
stripped of the exclusive image he had cultivated. The restaurant had become more successful than ever. A testament to the Bennett's belief in inclusivity and respect. For Albert, it was a bitter pill to swallow. But he couldn't deny the truth. In trying to uphold a standard based on prejudice, he had lost everything. And as the Bennetts welcomed patrons with open arms, he realized that true sophistication was far more than skin deep.